Hi, my name is Dr. Joseph Gleason from the University of California, San Diego and Rady Children's Institute for Genomic Medicine. I'm here with Martin Shui to discuss our recent publication in Nature entitled Somatic Mosaicism Reveals Clonal Distributions of Neocortical Development. The human brain is one of the marvels of the universe, yet we know little about where the cells come from and how they mix together to establish brain circuits. In pioneering work from the 1800s, Ramoni Cajal taught us that brain cells within the cerebral cortex have remarkably diverse shapes that pertain to their function. Subsequent work by Rakesh, Rubinstein, and Walsh used cell tracers in transgenic mice to later show that these cells are born within the germinal regions of the brain and then migrate to their final destinations within the gray matter. How can we track cellular origins in the human brain? Well, every time a cell divides, by chance, it develops a DNA mutation that's inherited by all of its daughters. So really, no two cells in the body are genetically identical. These mutations are termed somatic mosaic mutations since they're only in certain cell clusters. Sometimes the mutations can lead to cancer, but most of the time these mutations are benign, and through modern high-read genomic sequencing, we can uncover these mutations and reveal the cellular origins. For example, this cell on the right has several different DNA mutations that can lead back with information to tell us about who its progenitors were. By studying these mutations in complex tissues like brain, we are able to reveal cellular compositions and deconvolve these cellular mixtures. We have used this technology in brain from healthy deceased individuals to ask fundamental questions about how the human brain develops. Hello, I'm Dr. Xiaoxu Yang, co-first author of this study. The majority of our understanding of early brain development comes from model organisms. By using biological and chemical lineage tracing technologies, such as genomic editing with CRISPR-Cas9, previous researchers found that in the mouse brain, cells first establish their anterior and posterior differences, and then establish the left-right lineage differences, finally forming the forebrain, midbrain, and handbrain. It is previously thought that within the full brain, an anterior posterior establishment should come before the left right cell migration differences, so are the brain cell lineages distributed. However, the distribution of new cortical lineages are completely unstudied during development, and this is one of the major scientific questions in our study. We also want to answer the question can we use normal human development to explain the biological basis? how focal brain development disorders are restricted to only one hemisphere. To answer these questions, we designed this multi-dimensional sampling and genomic study of post-mortem human samples in four individuals. For this index case, we dissected out each of the prefrontal, frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal neocortical lobe from both hemispheres. We extensively punched the biopsies from each of the lobes, also from the heart, the liver, left and right kidneys, as outgroup tissues. We further homogenized the remainders of each lobe, extracted nuclei, and carried out fluorescent sorting for all major cell types in the brain. We also sampled 95 single nuclei from the same brain. As a discovery phase, we carried out 300 egg whole genome sequencing for each of the homogenized brain lobes and the central punch from each lobe. We used the state-of-the-art bioinformatics and genetic variant recording pipelines and identified hundreds of natural occurred somatic mutations from each of the donors. In the quantification and analysis phase, we genotyped the multidimensional samples with massive parallel amplicon sequencing method. Hello. My name is Dr. Martin Breus and I am one of the four first authors on this publication. As my colleague Dr. Yang already pointed out, this approach allowed us to gain a multidimensional dataset for each individual mosaic variant that we detected. So this means for each mutation, among the hundreds of mutations that we found, we were able to look at the geography, so where within the brain, the neocortical halves, or the organs a variant was detected. We could look at the location within the lobes and we also looked at the different types of cells that were sorted by fluorescence activated nuclear sorting across the different areas of the brain. 
So this really allowed us to get a descriptive overview of where mosaic variants and the corresponding clones that are marked by these variants were located across the brain and within which cell types. And this really allowed us to understand individual mosaic variants at great detail. However, one thing that we wanted to do following this individual analysis of clones was to look at the overview to really answer the questions that we set out to answer. For this, we actually plotted all the mosaic variants in a two-dimensional way, like you see here, where each individual plus here is one mosaic variant. So for each of these mutations, we then assessed whether the variant was found more likely on the left side or the right side, or more likely anterior or posterior, which is oriented in the brain as you can see here, where here would be the front of the brain, the back of the brain, left and right. So what we would have expected from the previous work and from the data found in mouse is that actually the anterior posterior is defined before the left-right split. However, to our surprise, we found the opposite. Within the forebrain, actually a variant and the corresponding clones are more likely to be lateralized to the left and right and can be found at any lateralization within anterior posterior than the opposite. So if truly the anterior posterior domains within the forebrain would be defined first, you would expect to see the opposite pattern, where you have a lot of variants on this axis, but not found here. So this really suggested to us that within the forebrain, you split the clones and the cells between the left and the right hemisphere when they are still able to diffuse along the anterior posterior axis. In conclusion, we found that the left-right asymmetry is established first in forebrain development and it's followed by anterior-posterior and dorsal-ventral, which we didn't show here today but which we could conclude from specific markers for inhibitory and excitatory neurons. So we define a cellular diffusion barrier, which can be physical or due to diffusion restriction, which follows the hierarchy of left-right, anterior-posterior and dorsal-ventral. So this is in contrast to what people have found for the larger domains of the brain, which are the forebrain, the midbrain, the hindbrain, which are defined before the left-right split, which is something that we also confirmed within our data. We also find that human forebrain cells originate from different progenitor pools, and this is similar to what has been found in rodents. So we could confirm in the human for the first time these data. And what's important, this hierarchy of having a left-right separation in neocortex first really helps us to explain lateralized disorders. So because of left-right being separated first before anterior-posterior, it now makes sense that in some cases you have disorders that can affect the entire hemisphere without representation of the contralateral hemisphere, and this is just an effect of normal development. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to our explanation of our recent manuscripts. We thank all our co-authors and our funders, and thank you very much for your attention.